Fire Emblem Fates. You play as the main character Corin, who was born to the peace-loving Hoshido and was raised by the glory-sinking Nor. The two nations collide, and you're left to decide which nation you're going to take arms with. In this video, we'll be uncovering Birthright, the Fire Emblem Fates version where you side with Hoshido. In Birthright, you fight alongside your birth family to resolve the conflict between Nor and Hoshido. Now I can't delve any further because of spoilers, but I can let you know that this was a very entertaining story. Now although this story was very entertaining, I wouldn't necessarily call it amazing. The reason I say that is because the story never really lived up to its full potential. This game revolves around two nations going to war with each other, yet in Birthright, I never felt like there was even a war going on. And because I never felt that there was a war going on, the stakes for me never really felt that high. The game never really puts you in any war battles that would have helped emphasize the whole nations at war idea. Instead, it separates you from the war and you fight in small-scale battles that mainly start because of misunderstandings or people's arrogance. With all that said though, there was never a dull moment in any of the game's 27 chapters. The story here is very emotional from the get-go, and it pulls your heart in many directions as the story unfolds. The characters in Birthright were very memorable, charming, and fun, while the conflicts between you and your adopted family of Nor were very heartbreaking. You could really feel their anguish knowing that you have chosen Birthright, the Hoshido side of your family, instead of Nor. The only problems I have with this story is the fact that characters that you have fought to keep alive might have well have just been dead because they're very uninvolved in the story. I mean, some characters besides the royal family were involved, but it, after a certain chapter, they might as well have just been dead because you don't see them again. It's like as if they mean nothing. And another problem I have with the whole ending of the game is that it leaves quite a bit of unanswered questions. It makes me feel as if I have to go play Conquest and Revelations if I want the full story. Now the gameplay in Fire Emblem is a JRPG tactical overhead strategy game in which there is permadeath. Battles in this game can become very stressful as enemies you fight can be just as strong or stronger than the troops at your command. In order to win, you have to use the terrain, positioning, and the weapon triangle to your advantage. In this Fire Emblem game, a new system called Dragon Veins is introduced. Now what Dragon Veins does is that it can turn the tide of battle by creating new areas and paths for troops to maneuver, it can restore your health, or it can sabotage enemy ranks and reduce their health. It's a very unique and rewarding system that changes gameplay according to the map you're on. Now gameplay is improved by the new support and pairing system. When two characters are standing side by side with each other, they gain an offensive buff where both units are going to attack in a fight. Yet, if they're paired up, they gain a defensive support where certain stats will be buffed up and every now and then the leading unit will be protected by the supporting unit. Another improvement to the gameplay is the new color-coded weapons that helps you keep track of the rock paper scissors mechanic in Fire Emblem, also known as the Weapon Triangle. And lastly, another notable addition to this Fire Emblem game is the new Phoenix Mode. Now what Phoenix Mode does is it resurrects your characters that have died this turn in the next turn, adding a new easier mode to Fire Emblem, if you don't like the whole permadeath. 
Even though I don't know why you would put on Phoenix mode and Birthright, considering there's a scouting mode, which allows you to grind for XP and loot and resources, so that way you can become even stronger before fighting the next chapter. Overall, Birthright's gameplay is very fun and satisfying whenever you win a battle. Now, another new addition to the Fire Emblem series that's not gameplay related is the My Castle feature. The My Castle feature allows you to create your own village and organize it the way you want. In My Castle, you can do many things, ranging from upgrading your equipment, to inviting your friends over to your personal quarters, or betting your resources in an arena battle. You can even visit other players' castles, you can gain their resources, and if you want to test your strength, you can challenge them to battles in which you can either inherit skills or their troops if you win. Now the last thing I would like to mention is the multiplayer. The multiplayer I'm not a big fan of because it really does seem like a last minute addition because it's just really bare bones. Most multiplayer maps come straight from the story, which I personally dislike because I've already played these maps. I want to play something new. And then there's nothing really to encourage you to come back. There's nothing there saying, hey, come back to this and you can unlock this or that. No, it's just, hey, you played, all right. Overall, I did enjoy my time with Fire Emblem Birthright. Now, if you're a 3DS owner and you're looking to pick up this game, then I do suggest this game. It's very fun and you'll have a blast with it. But if you don't have a 3DS and you're thinking of getting one just to play this game, eh, I would probably say that's your call. I don't think it's a must buy, but it definitely is fun. All right, guys, that is my thoughts and opinions on Fire Emblem Birthright. If you enjoy the video, leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and subscribe if you want to see more. I'll talk to you guys next time. Laters!